Welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. We had uh, started with the module of magnetics design. So, let us uh, continue on that module and uh, let us look into what are the losses that takes place in magnetics materials and your inductors and transformers. So, when we use uh, magnetic cores and uh, wind uh, uh, n number of turns on it, we have got windings and the current is flowing through it. So, there are two main types of losses that takes place. One is your winding loss and second is your core loss. And this core loss uh, that consists of two parts, one is your hysteresis loss and another is your eddy current loss. So, hysteresis loss, this is associated with this BH curve. Now, uh, this BH curve, I have uh, explained this uh, before. So, as we pass AC uh, through the core, then uh, your magnetic field intensity is, uh, it increases in one direction, then uh, it decreases in that direction and then it goes in the opposite direction, it builds up in the opposite direction and again uh, decreases in the opposite direction and this keeps on going uh, when we have an AC application. Now, that AC need not be always sinusoidal, it uh, may be switched voltage waveform when we have uh, PWM. So, uh, depending on that, uh, I mean the loss uh, may get affected. So, uh, each time it traces this full this uh, path, then whatever is uh, the loss that occurs uh, during this uh, tracing of uh, this complete path that is your hysteresis loss. Okay. Now, this uh, hysteresis loss uh, the people have uh, done analysis and they have uh, come up with uh, equations of uh, how you can uh, um, obtain this hysteresis loss. Uh, so, in this course uh, we will not uh, be going into it. But note that this hysteresis loss is something dependent on the material properties. Uh, it is less uh, dependent on the geometry of the material. It is uh, dependent on the material properties that means your permeability, what is the BH curve. Uh, it depends on that and it also depends on the frequency of operation. If you are operating at higher frequency then your hysteresis loss are going to be higher because uh, the more number of times uh, you trace this uh, complete uh, circle of a BH curve, every time corresponding to that there will be loss uh, taking place. Then other type of loss, uh, important loss uh, is your eddy current loss. Now what are eddy currents? You might have studied eddy currents before. So, when you have this uh, kind of a coil which is let us say producing a, a flux, then uh, if you have another surface or uh, another conductor which is also seeing that flux, then what will happen is that a current will be a established in it is basically a voltage will be induced because this is a closed circuit, this is a conducting material. So, current can flow through it. So, there will be currents induced which are called as the eddy currents and uh, the flux produced by those eddy currents will be such that they oppose the change in the main flux. Okay. So, that is how it is uh, shown here. You can see that this eddy current uh, uh, this will be shown here like circles. So, uh, when we have a magnetic material, a magnetic core, so of course you have the main flux and uh, this uh, core material have uh, certain levels of conductivities. That means it can conduct a current to some extent. Uh, so, that is why your resistivity of the material of the magnetic material is very important. If it is very high then very small currents can flow through the material and so that is uh, good because then you will have lesser eddy currents and so lesser eddy current losses. But uh, sometimes uh, you may be having higher uh, uh, conductivities 
that means more current can flow through that material and uh, so more eddy currents can get induced and so there will be corresponding I square R losses uh, through in that magnetic core. So, uh, uh, here uh, this is uh, shown that if you have a block let us say this is uh, uh, the block of the magnetic material. So, if you have this uh, magnetic flux uh, this uh, flux density B which is in this direction. So, accordingly there will be currents uh, which will be established which are your eddy currents and uh, these um, eddy currents will have corresponding I square R losses depending on the resistivity of that material. And uh, so, to reduce it uh, you might have already studied before we use laminations. So, because your uh, resistance uh, depends on the cross sectional area, if you have uh, higher bigger cross sectional areas of your conducting material then you will have uh, less resistance. But if you have lesser cross sectional area of your conducting material then your resistance will increase and so your eddy currents should decrease. And so, this is what is shown here. So, if you can cut uh, this into different uh, sections small 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 layers. So, so, that is called we call as the lamination. So, then also you will have eddy currents, but the resistance will be higher and so the currents should be lesser. Uh, so, eddy currents loss is basically your I square R loss. So, together these are called as the core loss. So, this core loss P C is the sum of your hysteresis loss and the eddy current loss and it is obtained as K F power M. B M is the flux density through the material. So, B M power N into V C of F is the frequency, this is the frequency of operation and K, M and N, these are empirical coefficients. And they are the dependent on core material. and V C is the core volume. And this core volume is given as A C multiplied by L C. So, is P V this is J as given as K F power M B M power N this is actually uh, in terms of watt per meter cube that means this is the loss density. Okay. The manufacturers of the cores uh, they usually give you the core density uh, instead of the, uh, the actual loss. When you have a particular material, so then we test for the material and then from uh, that we get to know the values of K, M and N. And uh, uh, so, depending on the, the frequency and uh, the flux uh, density, uh, we can obtain the core loss density. And then depending on the core size, we can obtain what is the total loss, core loss that may be happening in that particular core. So, for example, there is a material which is uh, known as the 3F3 magnetic material it is the name of that material. So, for that your P V is given as equal to 47.43 for F power of 1.3 B M power of 2.5 and this is in milliwatts per centimeter cube and this F is in kilohertz here and uh, this Bm is in Tesla.
Okay. So, uh, for that material I am showing you this example. So, this is the kind of relationship that you will be obtaining for your PV and uh, then depending on your uh, frequency and your BM you can obtain PV and uh, further you can also uh, obtain the core volume and uh, multiply with it and you will be obtaining the, the core loss. The core loss preferably which is a loss thing so it should be as small as uh, possible. So, you can clearly see that it depends on the, uh, the volume of the material and also on the material that you choose. So, this is a graph uh, between your uh, BM and your PV. So, uh, this uh, what we see here is that as your BM increases for if we see for any particular frequency, so then your uh, code loss is going to increase. And uh, if we go for higher frequencies, then also your code loss is going to increase and it is kind of a linear uh, rise that we can see here in this uh, graph. This is over here is uh, logarithmic, so it is a linear in terms of uh, uh, logarithmic uh, representation. So, uh, we saw what are the core losses, core losses consist of your eddy current loss and hysteresis loss. Then uh, with magnetics the other loss part that is associated is with are with the windings. So, let us uh, look into some of the important terms uh, in your windings. So, one effect which is very important is your what is called as the skin effect. Now, when we are passing DC through a conductor, then uh, uh, there is uh, the flux is not changing, whatever is the flux established that is not changing. So, then there are no eddy currents because of it and so there is no problem. But if we have AC current flowing through the conductor, then because of it what will happen is that there will be this varying magnetic field which will be established. And since this is varying, that magnetic field will induce a certain currents on the conductor. So, here it is shown like this that if this is your I which is flowing and then this is your magnetic field intensity H which is established and because of it there will be currents uh, that are established in it. So, it is like small small loops. So, these are your eddy currents. So, now this is your, your conductor. So, if it is a solid conductor is what is uh, being uh, shown here. Now, uh, if you observe here uh, this currents, then here uh, this uh, direction is opposite to the direction of the main current, whereas outside it is the uh, same as the direction of the main current. So, the way these eddy currents are established, what we observe is that inside the conductor, the eddy currents direction is opposite to that of the main current. So, that means they kind of cancel each other, whereas the current outside on this towards the surface, they are those eddy currents are in the same direction as the main current and so they aid to the main current. Okay. So, then what happens is that the entire current then remains on the surface of the conductor instead of uh, passing through the entire cross sectional area of the conductor. So, this is your cross sectional area of the conductor, okay, circular cross sectional area which is shown here. So, this current uh, may just get limited to only to certain depth of the conductors uh, cross sectional area instead of the entire area. So, this is your depth skin depth and that is given as this skin depth delta this is given by 2 rho w by omega mu and rho w is the resistivity of the conductor. It's, it is in ohm meter. Omega this is the frequency 
and this is equal to your 2 pi f and mu is the permeability of the conductor. Now this rho w is, is a function of the temperature. So for a particular temperature T this will be given as equal to rho T0 multiplied by 1 plus alpha T minus of T0. Okay, where alpha is the temperature coefficient. Temperature coefficient of resistance. And it is given as 1 by Kelvin. So, if we uh, know the resistivity at a particular temperature T0, then uh, we have to know this temperature coefficient alpha, we can find out the resistivity at a different temperature T. So, what uh, I want to say is that, that uh, this skin depth is also then dependent on temperature because this rho w is a function of temperature. So, usually we uh, use copper conductor. I mean many times we use copper conductors, of course there are other conductors also which are used. So for copper at uh, 20 degree C, you know, this uh, skin depth the delta W, this is uh, given as by 66.083 root over of F where F is the frequency is in mm. So, if you substitute the values for copper in this equation, so this is what you will be getting at 20 degree C. So, this much is the skin depth that you will be getting. So, this is a table which uh, shows how does it vary with frequency at 20 degree C. So, you can see here as the frequency increases your uh, skin depth reduces. That means the current is confined more to the surface as your frequencies are going to increase. So, that obviously means that, that your resistance of the conductor will increase as your frequencies are going to increase. There is another effect uh, which is called as the proximity effect. Now, uh, we may be having situations where uh, we may have conductors uh, close to each other in proximity of each other because you have several conductors in any converter and uh, they may be obviously in close to each other, they are in proximity to each other. So, in that case, the effect that takes place is called as the proximity effect. So, um, this is shown here like this. So, you have this is your wire 1, your conductor 1 and this is your conductor 2. So, there will be a magnetic field from your wire 2, okay. So, this is the current that is flowing in your uh, wire 2 and uh, there this is your uh, magnetic field which is established because of it and then that magnetic field will also induce an eddy current in the conductor in your wire 1. So, this is the direction of that uh, your eddy current okay? and this is the main current that is flowing in wire 1. So, what you see here is that in, in this part the direction of the eddy current is such that it is opposite to the main current. Whereas, here it is the same uh, direction as the main current. So, here on this side it is aiding the main current. So, here you will have main plus eddy currents which is uh, higher than the main current and on this side you will have uh, uh, main current minus eddy current. So, that is lower than the main current. So, that is like an uneven distribution of current on one side you have higher current density, on the other side you have lesser current density and uh, this is called as the proximity effect and uneven uh, densities of uh, current in the conductor.
conductor. One side you have higher current density, other side you have lesser current density. And this also leads to increase of resistance of the conductor. So, when we have DC, DC resistance let us denote it by RW DC. This is given by rho W L W by A W, where rho W is the conductor's resistivity LW is the conductor's length and AW is the cross sectional area of conductor. So, when we have AC winding resistance let us call it as RW that will be equal to RW DC plus additional resistance because of the skin effect and proximity effect. It is denoted as delta RW. So, we can write it as RW DC 1 plus delta RW by RW DC it can be written as. Now, this is called as the AC resistance factor or DC to AC resistance ratio FR we can uh, denote it by ok. So, then this will become equal to FR RW DC ok. So, FR it is the ratio of AC resistance by DC resistance. This is known as the AC resistance factor. And uh, this FR is going to be greater than 1 because AC resistance is higher than the DC resistance. So, when we calculate copper loss, so PW DC it will be equal to RW DC into IDC square. For AC it will become PW will become RW into IRMS square which then can be written as FR RW DC into I RMS square. So, when you obtain the copper loss of your uh, inductor or transformer design, then uh, note that depending on um, your how much frequency of your operation, your uh, resistance is going to be uh, increased by that much factor and that you have to incorporate while uh, calculating your copper loss. So, the key points of uh, this lecture are that that uh, your inductors and transformers the two types of losses one is your copper loss or the winding loss and second is your core loss. The core loss is two parts hysteresis loss and eddy current loss. Hysteresis loss depends on the magnetic materials and uh, eddy current loss uh, this is similar to your copper loss because of the induced eddy currents this loss takes place. And uh, I told you the equation of um, your core loss uh, which it is an empirical equation and uh, you can obtain the values of KMN uh, from uh, the manufacturers uh, data sheet. And further for your winding loss uh, you should keep in mind there is skin effect and proximity effect that takes place at uh, uh, because of AC operation and as the frequency increases those effects increases and so your AC resistance is higher than that of DC and increases with increase in frequency. And uh, so accordingly when you calculate the copper loss the I square R loss you should use corresponding resistance. Uh, AC resistance for your particular frequency of operation. Thank you.